So I recently had this trip up to Scotland and I met up with Ben Cafro basically to go riding with him and just get some edits out of it really. So on the way up to the first riding spot we had the GoPro in the window facing backwards with the microphone on, just switched it on for the journey and nothing planned, had no questions written down, we just basically had a chat and it turned into a really nice interview and definitely sort of worthy of being something on its own. So here it is, we've got no cutaways, we've got no sort of all the riding shots, etc. I've left out because they are gonna be in the next vlog, which is all about this riding in some of the best spots I've ridden with him. His riding's unbelievable. He's such a good rider and he's such a decent bloke. I hope you enjoy this. Ladies and gentlemen, Ben Cafro. Do you find that you end up with way too much footage? Yes. By the end, you're just like. F yeah, yeah. And I'm. I've you know, I try and do like half an hour videos, mine are. I mean, mm. some people are like. I mean, sometimes I'll do a five, six minute, but I try and do it like. Almost see it like a TV program, you yeah. know, at half an hour. And um, sometimes I'm like. God, this is getting too long now. Yeah. And then it's a nightmare when you do it, and then you have to start cutting stuff. Yeah. I can imagine with your stuff, with all the Cathro vision, you have so much footage. It's yeah, well, I've started trying to film less and less just yeah. to make it easier. Because I find that's most of the time just going through everything, trying to find all the stuff you actually want to use. Because like when I do the ghost and stuff, the camera sits and records for like an hour or two hours. Yeah. Oh really? Just scrolling through, chopping. Oh, you must spend ages. Yeah. I'm gonna look at that then. So when did you? How long have you been riding? You've been riding since you were a little kid, surely. Uh, about. Well, I've always ridden bikes. Yeah. Like before it was of me riding bikes when I was just a wee baz, yeah. little bricks and a ramp in the garden, like three, four years old, trying to send it. Smashing myself. That way, loads, of loads of fa loads of. Uh, we go this way. Yeah. yeah. Got loads of family photos of uh, me just like in bits, all cut and mashed up. Yeah. Uh, but stuck. Didn't know mountain biking was a thing till I was about ten. Yes. And there was a downhill race in my local village, and watched it. Like, oh. You did quite well in that, didn't you? No, I didn't race it. Oh, didn't you? Well, there was one you did that you did well. Cause I remember hearing your um, interview on that podcast. Uh, well, that was Davies. the next year. Right. Because I, I kind of discovered mountain biking, realised my, uh, uh, what bike was it? I had my Rally Max. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With uh, two inches of undamped suspension front and back, wasn't cutting it. Every time I did a drop, the pedals would bend down. Oh my <laughs> god. So then you'd switch to your opposite foot forward so the pedals were bent up for the next <laughs> drop. <laughs> then I uh, bought a second hand Orange Patriot. Yeah. Went racing on that. Oh, I'd love to see a picture of you on a Patriot now. I bet it was like a toy yeah. if you look at that <laughs> now. I was you're, for those who don't know, you're six foot seven, so you're towering over me. Yeah. Because the downhill bike's not really long enough for you, is it? Would you say? It's close. Like, I feel like it's getting closer every year. I feel like I'm at the stage now where the bike looks normal. Yeah, yeah. No, but I could go. I could go more with it for sure. Yeah. Like I'm at the stage everyone was at ten years ago with the bike size. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we're close. Um, but I reckon. I'll never get a bike that's fully properly big enough, but I've actually come to realise there's no such thing as a bike that kind of fits you because it just depends. You want a smaller one to be more playful, a bigger one to be more stable at speed, and you can ride any size. I find it's amazing, you know, when we talk about bike lengths and reach, and you know, reach is like the golden figure, isn't it? Yeah. And then, like like myself, I'm going to be changing soon from a large to XL in length in reach, and that goes from 470 to 500, which is quite a big step. Yeah. But then you think it's only 30 mil. It's I know. Nothing, is it? Well, you say that, but then I've got on a bike that's like five mil longer, and thought I couldn't ride it. 
just because the, the slight change in body position you got to do to make it work takes a wee while to get the hang on. Yeah, yeah. So th- I reckon 30 mil longer, yeah, it'll be fine. Yeah. Once you get used to it. But first few rides, you might be like, whoa. This is, yeah, a bit <laughs> or long. Or like, I find it's corners. You try and corner fast on a bike that's longer. I usually find you do it really shit the first yeah, few times. Yeah. You've got to get your weight more over on the front wheel, really, yep. haven't you? To get that's, that's like the golden rule, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, as a kid, then you did all your racing, mm-hmm. and you were a bloody good racer. Yeah, did really good. You're still uh, a good racer. Yeah, try, still try. <laughs> but you're more committed now to your YouTube than obviously than training, like when you went pro. Uh, well, YouTube still. Fe- well, actually, this year it feels like it's kind of fifty-fifty between working and video YouTube stuff. Yeah. Um, last year it was kind of just a bit on the side part time, and then this year it's kind of got <laughs> it's got a bit it's got a bit wild. Yeah. I feel like uh, most of my time's gone into making videos now. But uh, yeah, racing was did it as seriously as I could. Never actually made any money out of it, and then sort of it clicked where I realised I'm going to have to do something else to actually make a living. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of blowing it all on travelling and racing, which was excellent. But uh, yeah, you got to make some money at some yeah. point. I remember, remember the first time I heard of you. We come to Innerleafen, uh, the Brit G. What was it? The UK gravity and uh, forest. Yeah, it was in a Leafen one, I think it was, Ooh. and everyone was like Donny this Donny that he's British champion no one can beat him yeah. and then uh, I remember someone saying to me yeah you wait till we go to Scotland yeah. and you 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 won that didn't you I'm yeah, pretty I'm, sure I'm, you won and I was like who's this guy and then I saw you I was like look at the size of him and yeah you were like uh, and you weren't really a enduro racer that was my first ever enduro oh, was it yeah <laughs> <laughs> and you beat the British champion I suppose that's uh, that's Bit better than average, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I just treated it as a downhill race. Yeah. I did five downhill runs and just went all out on every single uh, one. Did you, get, it, did you get anything um, from that? Did you get any sort of better offers or anything? Yeah, no one cares about race results. It's weird, isn't it? I mean, yeah. that's, that is almost uh, accentuated nowadays where mm. when you look at people who are sponsored it's more about their social media than mm. the results well that I mean all before social media and online presence is the only reference you had was getting in magazines or doing well at races and getting mm. in race reports but even back then getting in magazines was more valuable yeah. than doing well at races well yeah obviously I would be writing for dirt and things like that back in the day yeah got offered a lot of stuff I mean I was in the 90s and early noughties I was in crap down there but um, I was in the magazines so I was yeah, writing for yeah. it so I had all this nice kit it was ace <laughs> so you've moved up here now um, yeah. from where was it you moved Ob- from? Oban Ob- Oban yeah, yeah. Um, no, no bike in there no <laughs> there's not much Fort really was about two hours up the coast but that was about it yeah, yeah. And have you have you ever have you done much stuff in England or not? Only racing. I I travelled down for the national series, um, but that's the only stuff I've really done down there. So what have you done our way? You've done Hopton, Bringwood. I think I've done Br- yeah I've done Bringwood. I don't know if I've done Hopton or not. Yeah. Um, most of the stuff down your way is across the border in Wales. I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, Wales is real close to me anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Wow. How's the how's the English accent? Do it. No, I can't do accents. Can't like, I really wish I could. I love it when people can just bust out like a perfect uh, impersonation, but I can't. I'm always messing about. <laughs> I absolutely love it. Yeah, I can. I can do Scottish accents, but I don't know where they're from. I can't. I can't even do a Scottish accent. <laughs> What's yours, class, Dad? Yours See, I don't know. I'm really neutral. Yeah, it is. Like, it's not. Yeah. I think you can tell I'm Scottish if you're not from here. But I've had people in Scotland saying, where in England are you from? I don't know. Yeah. So, yeah. Don't know. So, I met Andy from Go Wear MTB, the chap who does oh. all the uh, adventure rides yesterday. Yep. His accent 
and his missus <laughs> is so strong. <laughs> and I thought, where's this bloke from? And he's from there, isn't he? Yeah. He's from there, but he's yeah. like, Oh, yeah, shit, go in, Lee. I've got some funny. standard ones that I can try and. you got like the Glasgow, really soon, you know, pretty hard. <laughs> you kick your face in if you look at them. <laughs> and then as you go a bit further up, up north, it, it softens out a bit. Hey, I'm from Scotland, yes. <laughs> it's a bit nicer. <laughs> don't sound so aggressive. But yeah, I can't do any. I don't know where they're from, really, mine. No. But I'm, if I spend time with anyone, I always end up doing their accents. You know? uh, I I pick out things on it, like subconsciously. Like I get made fin- fun of for some interviews I've done where my yeah. accent has gone more like the person I'm interviewing. Yeah. Like I was chatting with Gwyn, and uh, someone was like, "Why is he trying to put on an American accent?" So I, was like, <laughs> I don't. I don't mean it. But I, I guess it's kind of like trying to fit in almost and you end up speaking like the person like when we're speaking to someone who's French or speaking English in a French accent yeah, I, was yeah. Like, I don't mean it honestly well, you start, when you've been around a lot of foreign people you, you start talking in pidgin English yeah. going up at the end yeah. but, <laughs> like, like people who've travelled too much so that's the way they talk <laughs> your six skills tell us about six skills and how much of a part of your life is that now so was racing Realised I wasn't making money and then did the obvious thing that every failed sports person does and <laughs> start a coaching business. Yeah. Um, didn't know if I'd be any good at it, didn't know if I'd like it. And then turns out I think I'm pretty good at it and yeah. I really enjoyed it. I mean, started that in 2012. Mm-hmm. Like I registered the business in 2011. So I've been coaching for eight years, seven years. Is that yeah. when you first started doing video stuff? Because obviously it really helps with the coaching to show people um, the differences. Well, I've always done video stuff. Like since I was a kid, like I'd always steal my dad's camera and like yeah. film stuff and make me home movies. Um, but I think I started doing video stuff properly to help the Scottish Downhill series. Yeah. Um, I was like, I'll help promote the, the races by just filming some of the racing with the GoPros and uh, put it up online and that's when I started doing it properly but I never never actually did any coaching videos for the business um, that I was just that was just work it's just yeah, working away yeah. but I tag my business in all the SDA videos and I branded it uh, as my coaching business as well yeah. I raced under my coaching business name to help promote that but, so have you uh, got people who work for you with your coaching oh yeah business? I'm looking though yeah I'm hunting because I'm too busy for doing YouTube stuff and coaching at the moment, so I need someone else to to do some coaching work for me. I am hoping to transition to that I own the business and then I have coaches that do it and then yeah. I can just do what I want, but I'm not, I'm not there yet. And what about your filming with the YouTube stuff and the Cathro Vision, is that uh, something where you might end up with somebody else working for you there? Yeah, it's heading that way. Um, pretty much I'm at a point where I can't do them any better than I can do right now and yeah. I'm, hap- I'm happy with the, what I'm making but I don't think it's sustainable because I absolutely just burn myself out over a World Cup week and yeah. when you get a couple in a row it's just massively long days like non-stop and, and I can do with some help and it's getting to the point where I can afford to do it now yeah so I just need to find someone who's one not a dick <laughs> yeah <laughs> good at editing three I don't know is good to hang about with they've got to be yeah. yeah not a dick and good to hang about with is a very high point because you're going to spend a lot of time with that person <laughs> exactly and they can't be too sort of I, I always think if you were to do that they can't be too full of themselves yeah, you've got to be yeah. well, just chilled out really yeah yeah I do, I do like that mellow so yeah. yeah that's that's the goals I'm looking looking for some good people so uh, CVs to yeah, Catherine Jimmy. <laughs> there you go, folks. If you're a good editor and you're not a dick, <laughs> get it out there. Cool. I've noticed with you with your um, with the stuff you do to camera, and it's one of the things that sticks in my mind. Why you sort of my favourite to watch in the UK? It's something that a lot of people don't really think about or don't realise is that you. Um, got amazing gratitude you're very thankful to anything that happens coming to you you know like your patreons um any sponsorship 
I think some people sometimes, pro bikers, other YouTubers maybe, they just take stuff a bit for granted and you can mm. tell. And you can also, you don't take yourself too seriously. Yeah. Which I think is a massive step to being a decent person and a watchable person is, yeah. you've got to have the ability to laugh at yourself. Oh yeah, you've got to. Do you know to. what I mean? Well, I'm not that quick-witted or kind of uh, good at that kind of stuff. So I think it's good just to make fun of yourself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I've all, growing up through racing, I, like, I did get a few people that did help me out pretty well but I never thought I got as much as what I could see everyone else getting yeah. so actually I'm really thankful just because I feel like I'm just getting so much support right now and it's just well good yeah. so it's just genuine it's not feigning it for fans or anything like that to kind of keep them happy it's just because I'm getting loads of help right now and it's well good that's brilliant how many pay do you know how many patreons you've got uh, so it's about 210 wow. 220 wow. I think kind of they... varying from like donating a pound up to uh, I think it's about 20 ish wow. D depends it's like it's, it's varied it's that's good. brilliant that's um for anybody who don't who doesn't know watching this patreon because i don't have patreons i don't um i did try and do it and i got a bit confused and <laughs> i got to halfway through <laughs> doing it and got that baffled i just said oh i'm not going to do it and i've never done it but yeah. um it's basically people who donate towards videos you've got different hmm. ways of getting uh, some sort of budget off people yeah. or you can give them extra coverage and footage on videos and yeah you, you can do anything you want with it you could either go right uh, every month you can donate a bit of money and then th th that is it that you just know that you're helping to make the videos possible or you can give them rewards you can do yeah. extra videos that only they can see you can mention them in your public videos you can even send out little gift packs sticker packs things right. like that um, that they get in return for what they donate, um, but it's pretty, it's pretty good. It's open ended. Yeah, I, I do it as a per video one. So each World Cup, there's a Patreon charge, and that's what goes towards making the videos. Right, it's pretty good. Yeah, I, uh, I kind of follow a thing. I don't know if you know about uh, the law of attraction. Um, mm. It's basically, it's just, it's kind of a mindset of. Um, just a way to be around people so try and always be positive mm -hmm. and you know if you, you give you get what you give mm -hmm. hence why I've been one of your patrons is why I decided to do yeah. it it's not <laughs> a lot of money and it's you know the only one I give money to yeah um, so I suppose it's not a, it's not a selfless act because in a way I think well maybe the law of karma mm. will mean that I'll get something back from it. You yeah, know? <laughs> there is no altruistic actions. There's always something either yeah. in return or I karma. Totally, or, totally agree or with that. If you donate money and you feel good, then that's benefiting you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I see, um, yeah, one of the things like that that I see that can gripe me a bit okay. is when you see people on social media and they've got like a load of litter that they picked up and they said oh, I picked this up today on the trails it's not good blah 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 and you think well why did you have to put it on media why didn't you just pick it up anyway yeah. you know in a way you're trying to make yourself sound better yeah. uh, <laughs> little it, things it, it, like that as long as they're actually doing something good as they're yeah. doing that then I'm okay it's with not it that's bad. absolutely yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, keep, keep going. when you started your so, editing sorry it's the next right when okay you when you started your editing um, were you uncomfortable looking at yourself on camera and talking did it um, feel very weird so in terms of the editing, editing i think i got a little bit of vanity in me so i could deal with it i was all right with it yeah but what i really struggled with is i'm sure you struggle with it it's just talking to a camera yeah um, while people are uh, watching you yes <laughs> yes yes i really struggle with it so like, I'll always like try and run off and hide somewhere. <laughs> what, what I find with that is I don't want to do it around people, but as soon as I turn the camera on and I start talking, mm. I they're like they zone out. They all sort of zone out like they're not there, and I can mm. get on with it then. I find some people will stop and watch you. Yeah, and it's pretty weird. Like, oh, a lot of them. Yeah, it's pretty oh, weird. It's really busy. It's busy, isn't it? We might, we might get it at the end here. Yeah. Yes. Oh, look at that. Spot on. 
So, let's get out on the trails, eh? Yeah, let's go biking. There you go. I told you he was a nice bloke, didn't I? Anyway, I hope you liked this interview. As usual, give us a like, give us a comment, subscribe if you haven't, subscribe to Ben. His channel will be up here for you to have a look if you haven't looked before. Massive thanks for watching. Till the next one, where you see how well he rides and how awesome some of his trails are. Keep it pinned.